<sighs> we are February 8th filming this a second time. So I uploaded on Saturday the second part of the docu-series The Lies of Chris Day, my interview with Max Vincent. And there has been a lot of drama. Chris Day decided to watch the video, make a response, and delete the response quickly. In his response, he was right about something, and Max was wrong about something. Max talked about Chris Day lying about having a heart attack. He said that he had this big injury, he had a heart attack or something. Dude, you don't recover from a heart attack this bad. But Chris Day had a heart attack and proved it by showing a heart monitor for heart attacks and he also sent me a pic of it on private messages. So Max was wrong and Chris was right. But it's not over yet. People have been trying to create drama to be a part of this docu-series. This docu-series is about Chris Day and the video I made about him. I do not want to create other drama to put you in it. It is ridiculous. An individual who is friends with Chris Day that I will not name has messaged me and Max creating drama to be in the docu-series. He has Chris claims this guy is his friend, but he has confirmed to Max that he is not really his friend and that he is faking everything for fun. And he deleted the message. He deleted the message and and decided to defend Chris, to defend him, and then texted me on private to tell me he's defending Chris and that Max is lying, but Max and I have been friends for a very long time and have never lied to each other, and this guy is lying. He said that he doesn't like Chris Day and he's faking the friendship. And then at the end of our messages, after saying to me that he is defending Chris, wants to do a fourth part of the docuseries with him, talking dirt on someone. He has not mentioned any name, but we all know he wanted to talk dirt on Chris Day and I'm not giving him a platform to have exposure or whatsoever. This docu-series is about Chris Day and not about someone creating false drama just to be in it. And also, out of nowhere, the second part got so many dislikes that quickly they were neck to neck the likes and dislikes and an hour later all of the dislikes were gone so i assume maybe chris or the guy that wants to be in my docuseries spammed the dislike button with many accounts i do not know who did this if chris did this or this other guy did it but this is getting out of control i want to end this right now so here you go, the Chris Day interview starts now. So we are December 29th and today is the day I'm going to interview Chris Day. I started writing down some questions earlier today not prepared really, uh, but uh, I have to rewatch the second part. Well, the interview I got with Max to really finalize my questions for Chris, and he thinks it's gonna be a light interview, a light hearted interview. But I'm gonna ask some serious questions about you know his production, his production company, film school. Uh, just some of the things Max told me were lies according to him. I personally think also those are lies, but yeah, he could I know Chris will lie to me in this interview, but before we start, I am going to tell him to tell me the truth no matter what, even if I know he is going to lie to me in this interview. So. It, we're in the afternoon and I'm gonna interview him tonight and I just have no clue of what will happen. The interview will 
will start soon. I sent an invite via Hangout to Chris Day. He's setting up everything and I don't know what to expect. I can't believe this is happening and now I just have to wait. Everything set up, the camera, the, the our conversation, I'm just waiting for him to send me an invite to go on Hangout. So I'm just waiting. I'm gonna call him because it's just too long, so I'll just do it. Google Hangout doesn't work, so we're gonna have to do it with Facebook. Try to see if I can get this to my computer. Okay. Mm. It shouldn't be a problem. It's just getting super fucking good. And I got three little kids trying to go sleep with them. It's on my track. Well. Oh, uh, we're her kids. Yeah. Yep. I was talking to me on the other side of the door. <laughs> Um, okay, so call me on a line and I'll answer. Uh, you want me to call you again? Yeah, call me again. Okay. <sighs> it's about to go down, ladies and gentlemen. It's about to go down. <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. Uh, there we go. Can you see me? Yeah. Alright, I can see you. You can hear me? I can hear you and everything. Okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's already recording. We're finally here. This is the interview. We have Christopher Day on webcam with us right now. So, I'm surprised you said yes. Why did you say yes to this interview? Well, because I think your video is very talented. I think that it really said um, the truth about a lot of my films that I've made. Um, and I very much thought it was terrific. I thought that, um, you know, there's just, I, I, we'll go into it, but I think overall it was just a very sincere video. And, you know, I, I get a lot of trash, but there's a few people who really come out and, you know, speak their full minds to it and creatively. And you absolutely do. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And your your webcam is laggy a little. Like okay. sometimes it freezes. Okay. But uh, so yeah, how did you find out about my video? Because I didn't warn you or DM'd you about it. So how did you find out about uh, the video? I got a text from a certain friend, and he said, "Hey, check out this video." And so I checked it out, and. 50 minutes, which is a lot of editing, I think, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was, it was a bit of a bitch to edit, but no, I just saw it and I loved it. I thought it was very true. To the main I haven't seen Playboy in a while, so to see some of that clips was just, especially with my fiance scene, was kind of funny because we don't, I, I don't show her that, and that's a part of myself that I just don't look back on. Mm. Um, but it was a terrific, like, video. Overall, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, it still yeah. freezes. It's freezing like you're not moving. Yes, no. Okay, you want to use my phone? I can just call you on my phone. Yeah, do that. Okay, all right, let me do that real quick. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, totally much better. Wait, all right. So we were talking about you watched my video, you said you really yep. liked it. 
What are some yeah. of the criticism that I mentioned that you specifically agree with the most? Like what it is? Um, definitely the earlier projects. I mean, definitely the earlier projects. A lot of people didn't know the story, and for that, you know, coming out of a kid from high school, um, you did not have a lot of knowledge about how to make a film. Uh, it was definitely where I, you know, was could understand. I definitely saw that, and so I connected to a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Especially with my last film recently uh, coming out, uh, hearing a lot of more criticism that he's actually trying a lot better, especially in the last few films, mm-hmm. um, you know, which I've learned a lot. Well, good. Um, did you? I know you watched Vegan Gains and my video, but did you yeah. watch other content on my channel just to know? I think as of right now, Vegan Gains might be, but I've been trying to get some more content seen. I've seen some of your vlogs, but besides movie-wise, I've seen the game. Well, it's not on my YouTube channel, but uh, yeah, so just a question. Just with everything I've criticized on your content, yeah. um, how do you film and edit those? Are you filming with your phone? Where do you Yeah, right edit? now, it was my phone, but for a lot of the other ones which was coming out, um, in the documentary, it was with a new camera. It was with a camera? Um, the last two have been, yes. Because it, it looked like a phone, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, understandable, it does, yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty older camera from like 2014. Okay. So now it just got updated, so absolutely. Chris said he filmed his last two projects, his documentary and coming out on a camera. How do you hold a camera like it was a phone? It's so weird. I, I, I still do not believe that it is a camera and I think he said from 2013, but I genuinely think it's his phone. I, I do not believe that it is a camera or filmed with a camera. He does everything on his phone. That is what I think. And what's your editing software? Uh, right now it's Power Director, but I've been trying to get started on Final Cut Pro. Okay, because we, product. I still saw the watermark in your documentary. Yeah, I was, yeah that watermark is a pain in the fucking ass. But why do you have that if you have if you have Pyro? I don't know what the name is. Final Cut Pro. I'm about to start doing that. Uh, yeah. I just wait for that. Yeah. So you have a MacBook, or you're gonna put uh, uh, something legal or legal? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna work on trying to get a better software. Absolutely. Okay. Because yeah. Yeah, it, it shows. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you, sure. so you're editing it on a computer if you're talking about uh, editing software like Final Cut Pro. You use a computer. To me, it looked. I would use a for that, yes. To me, to me, it looked like you were editing on your used phone. To be on a phone. Like it used to be a phone before I'm starting with all this new technology, this new uh, editing software. Yeah, I remember I would before. YouTube, I would make these videos and I would edit it on my iPod with yeah, iMovie. Yeah. But uh, iMovie was where I first started with some of my stuff. Yes. But Most likely play movies. Yes. Yeah, and uh, by watching Legacy and all, I see a lot of clips with fingers in front of the camera. You don't yeah, cut that out. Something I've been trying to work better on. Uh, it's a hard thing to tell somebody who's a cameraman, hey. Try not to when you're in the middle of the shot, and then when you kind of have the crew from him one day, the edit around that is very much a challenge. That whole film was a challenge. I was surprised we even got back to the And uh, I see the finger in front, but do you film like many times? You have many takes? Or I film, it, you know, I, I've learned this a lot from Brian Scorsese, I've learned this a lot from all my idols. I film until I think the scene's right, and whether it's 10 takes, 20 takes till I run out of, you know, memory. <laughs> I think that absolutely you have to keep going until the scene's right. Yeah. In the case of Austin with the target, which is very much criticized. What What is so challenging about telling a person to not put their finger on a lens of a camera? There is nothing challenging about it. 
unless this person is really special something like that it is not really a challenge to say to a person do not put your hands or fingers on a lens it's not a challenge for me there was a lot of editing which I could have done better um, but the fight itself outside of the cut thing um, itself like the start of the fight was very much what I what I very much liked about that was also the start of the fight when you see the fight and obviously and also with uh, Fear of Blood um, is that you obviously see the thing we do see a lot more with editing in case of the fighting because editing a fight scene is a very hard thing to do yeah but very also hard. just practicing them because in Legacy yeah. you barely hit each other no, yeah, and, and it's a little and, and it's cringy to, to be honest. We're trying to rent out places for the ring because the last fight will be in the ring center, so we are trying to rent out some of that. And where do you have that budget to rent out a ring or? A lot of that is coming from my own pocket for parking three jobs. Okay, so which is where a lot of people start out, like yeah, understandable. And I also, you know, I've said this before. I come from a very of kind of family, but I never asked for a handout. I once earned it on my own, and that's always something that I've learned making these films, which they are maybe not the best content, or maybe not the best great, uh, you know, content as well. Is that I do what I have, and especially for Legacy, for Legacy, which was a nightmare because we lost a lot of people we originally had. It wasn't supposed to be a certain guy; it was the trainer. It was supposed to be someone else who mm. uh, dropped out last second. Um, which I'm hoping Legacy 2 won't be that problem. I just don't think it will. Um, I'm not directing, actually. I just I just stepped down because I kind of had that problem with Legacy. Legacy was a lot. It was a lot to take. It was a lot to go through as a director yourself because it was just a nightmare to get through filming. And I've had that through a lot of my films. Uh, Jack Cross, the new one, for instance, we had a really crazy reshoot. And so when you're doing that and you're trying to get the film done there is a lot of you know flaws and you can see a lot of flaws with you know trying to do what you do but you keep getting better with each film you do and i definitely see that with a lot of people and myself to just you know start with what you have best advice i can say for young people who want to start making films is put a budget out and use what you've got whether it's movies for making money whether it's starting out with no budget which is not the best you know honest opinion of mine now um, but starting off the way you need to start. And that's a very hard thing to do, but it's also, if you want to commit to this, you've got to work those steps. And that's a very hard thing to do, but it's also what it takes to get to that. Okay. And uh, so of course, when he talks about The Protector and Legacy, The Protector was his worst film. And of course, he says he did not direct it. And legacy said he was it was too much for him so he stopped directing it and talking about uh, the perfect shot and also according to you a perfect shot is you with the finger on the lens and also uh, you were filming some parts of legacy like when you film the old man or whatsoever so um, just of course when a movie looks really bad or whatsoever you say that you did not direct it so a little odd to be honest yeah do you have other directors like how does it work yeah, how long uh, did, does it take you to like film these because by what i'm looking at it looks like you you film this in like two or three days like we how try long? To do as much as we can. Some days there's two or three days. Sometimes it takes longer. Legacy was about just due to scheduling was like two months of shooting for a ten minute film because mm -hmm. we didn't have a lot of people who were could help at the time, and a lot of the actors who were signing were very also occupied. Um, it just depends. Fear of Blood was a two day shoot. The Target was a one day shoot. So it's like it just depends. Um, Coming out was about a two week shoot, just because of setting up the shots, uh, especially the final ones, which took a good two hours to even get that shot right. I mean, but you're looking at the protector, which I did not direct. Um, mm -hmm. That took a good week. 
and it's just because, especially the fight, we, we rehearsed that fight for about a month to try to get it a lot better than what some of the other ones were. So I do have a lot of friends who I do go to film school with who are these people, a lot of people accuse you know, me of, hey, that's Chris Day, not somebody else. No, but somebody else directing. It's just, if they don't want to talk or they just want to kind of step behind the scenes, I do have friends who are like that and who kind of just, you know, are like that. So I try to, you know, also as a producer, uh, try to publicize more. I, I do try to do that more because I just think also through the company and, you know, trying to, you know, there's a lot that you have to, you know, go through. And speaking, you talk a lot about film school, but uh, which film school do you go to? Like, which? I went. To, uh, I did an online classing through LA Film School, and then I dropped out of that just due to a lot of stress. And then I finished through this online school called uh, Film School. So you did it online. Yes. Okay, because I saw from researcher from Nebraska and there was a theater yeah. school nearby was, so that's what I thought really first. Hard. Yeah, UNL I went for a couple of years though. Uh, uh, University of Nebraska League which has a great Johnny Carson theater program uh, in directing but I couldn't finish because I was doing a lot of family things so I get home. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just finished with film school. So um, do you, did you do some films for film school if even if it was online? Yeah. If so, do you have any proof or videos online? Um, I have some. I have not shown just because I just haven't put them up yet, but I will. Um, I did so. I did a reenacting scene from one of my favorite films, uh, The Town. Um, and also, uh, Coming Out was my final like big project, and then the documentary was too. Uh, was Coming Out for film school or just coming out by yourself? Film. Coming out was for film school, but I had oh, a really? crew. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That Just I didn't because know. I, I wanted to tell that story for a long time, and then I finally decided, hey, you know, I have to create something for my final project, and coming out was that. That was the one I did. I got an A-plus on it, so. Really? I mean, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, so he says that coming out was a film school project, and he had, and he got an A-plus on it. I don't believe this at all. How could a shaky cam, finger, finger on the lens movie, recorded on a phone or even not a phone, get an A+. I don't even know how online film school work. Do you have your own equipment? He told me that you have your own equipment, but how can coming out, how can coming out get an A+. In film school please let me know I don't know how this can get an A plus I genuinely am so confused about it you're talking about coming out and it's a message about family relative 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 sorry and yeah I just and being, being yourself I just find just while setting up at, at all of this I just found it Hypocritical to be honest yet you make yeah. No, you make a video a film about coming out and you call your computer or whatsoever gay Just that to me was hypocritical yeah, that's, understand, that's understandable and I completely understand that yeah. because, because I I just found it hypocritical. I just wanted to get this out of the way Oh, no, no. So with Absolutely. the message of that the film it just doesn't look genuine but yeah. Were now there was a lot more scenes that were not in the film. Um, there was a just because I think for me with the film, it was a it was a personal thing with a, with a really close friend person of mine who yeah, is not around anymore. And um, wasn't that your cousin or a family relative? The cousin was my cousin. But you just yeah. said it was a close well, friend. It was like it was a close. You know, like he was close. It was my cousin. Okay. He was very, very close to me. Um, and it didn't end up the way he wanted it to. Um, his dad came around, but his parent, his mother, you know, it's just the. It, I wanted to tell a true story about that. I wanted to tell the real life about what is how hard is it coming out to you know family. 
But it's hard because you you did you're basing this off someone else because you didn't live through this, so it's so it can't be that genuine, genuine since you're not the person live going through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, now you. It, it's also the like when I decided I wanted to do it, I was very pressured to do it. I was very like, do I really want to do this? Because it's it's a tough subject, but I think that as much hard work as I put into it, which I did, put everything into it, um, it's just something that I'm very proud of. It's something that it's you know a message like that. The same thing with my film alone, um, which I don't know if you've seen. No. Um, which deals with suicide and depression, which I dealt with personally uh, when I was younger. So it's a hard thing, but it, for me, it's like, I just, the thing is, I wanted to tell this true story that I feel like no one really knew. That other people knew, but no one really expresses it in my honest opinion through short films. Oh. Uh, um, which I haven't, the ones I haven't seen. So, uh, as you know, I interviewed Max for yes. this docuseries. Yes, I haven't seen it yet, but I have heard actually you interviewed him. He says, I haven't seen it. Of course you haven't seen it. I was recording the docuseries. I, I did not edit anything while recording the docuseries. Of course you haven't seen it or even heard about the docuseries. So I don't know why he said I heard about it or whatsoever because I don't think Max even talked about getting interviewed or anything to people. So of course, of course you didn't see it, Chris. Nothing was even edited and the docuseries wasn't even finished recording. But uh, all of this will come out by the end of January, but I... I made I made questions about the things he told me, so I'm gonna okay. go okay. on right now. So I I never watched your movie reviews, but according to Max, no, you don't. <laughs> Max told me you don't watch movies that you review, and that he's a, saying that. that you're being vague and you're just doing this to get attention that you don't really watch the movies that you review do you is this true um i will say this i you see movies now a long time ago and you can ask matt here who's one of my best friends um i i did lie and say i see movies when i did it so a lie for a long time where i couldn't stop lying and then now actually seeing movies which i do i haven't talked to max in like two years yeah which i do and i live a lot closer to a movie theater in the elmo draft house said. so i i get the opportunity to see more limited small films uh, but i do i do try to see as much as we can and i do i still I, i try to see as much movies as i can i've seen about almost 170 films this year mm. and those i have sat through and seen especially cats but it's you know coming off of somebody who used to lie a lot and who lost a lot of people because of that i've become a better person as a whole because of that because i had a hard time lying it was a, it just not just here it's a lot of other things and i have not said this before because i didn't want to express it for a long time and i kept it hidden and max doesn't know this because i never told him this but you know i was just tired of being who i was because you're being this person when you're lying about personal these stuff you're lying about this and you're not being true to yourself mm. and so now i feel like i'm more true to myself because i actually really say the things that i want to do so he you said you were friends with max but from his from his hat from his aspect from his side you were never friends according to him no matter according to him he has said a lot of things and he has been nice but he also has been like kind of a jerk but did you yeah, consider yeah. him did you consider him a friend no matter if he I never did. considered you a friend did you chris consider, consider a friend, max a friend i always knew he was kind of thinking of me more as a joke but i just said and a lot of my friends just said hey that's max but i considered him a friend and then yeah so no it's just at this time it just always felt like later on i kind of realized 
with myself that it was just becoming a joke and not. Still talking about Max, he told me a bombshell. I'm gonna learn if it's true or not. He told me that you found his phone number and he never gave his phone number to anyone. If it's true, where did you get his phone number? Who gave it to you and why? Why? I never had his phone number. I called him on Messenger, but I never had his phone number. Because he told me that the reason why he blocked you and everything went no, down. The reason why he blocked me was because I called his ass out because he showed everybody on the Shmodown Facebook page of a copy of Playboy. And I got kicked out because of that, and he blamed me for that. It's not because of me calling his phone number. It's because he did that. But you're saying I never this is knew not his true. Number and I never called him. So you did not get the phone number? I don't know his phone number at all. Well, I keep my phone numbers very private and I don't give my number out like at all. So basically, someone's lying because he said. You I got his number, him. you say it never I happened. Think, I do think I don't trust him with a lot that he has said. And a lot that he has said in the past as well. Um, I do. Now, uh, I saw this on your Twitter. You tweet out meeting producers, but based yeah. on what you do, I, I, I just don't believe it, but do you really meet big producers is this true I never said big producers I just have producers of my company that's what I meant and if I said it wrong I apologize but and your company that I work with that I know and your company is uh, made it's by like, yourself um, yes but I have a lot of friends who I have also known from Lincoln where I went to college and that's who we started this together and do you like, do you have salaried employees or something like that? Do you pay no, people? No, not yet. We are working on that. It's just like the free time that people have. Uh, work to progress. We just started. So, um, I remember he told me about this because Max told me you posted on your Facebook that when you went to jail and you did crimes, yeah. but you never yes. specified yeah what those were because it was private but i will say this somebody called my mother a fat piece of shit and i went and assaulted him in front of a walmart and i paid the price for it i spent 30 days in jail 30 days for beating someone and for beating somebody because they talked shit about my family and then i had to spend two years off on probation two years yeah. on probation yeah well for being 17 years old man yes uh 17 years old you, you, you're and I screwed up and I became a better person because I've had a lot of weight, started working out, try to be a better man. See, there's a lot of things that Max don't know about me that a lot of my other friends do. And I will tell you this, is I had a life that I did not even like. I didn't like the person I was before and I changed. Mm. And uh, I know uh, Playboy, the title of my video was about Playboy and Yep. Max told me you posted Playboy on Pornhub. No, I did not. Because he told me you posted it on he Pornhub sent me a link. first. He sent me a link saying somebody sent me this guy, and I did not. I don't even go on Pornhub. He said somebody sent me a link saying somebody put your movie on Pornhub. Really? Yep. Because he told me I you did not put that movie on Pornhub. I know actually who did. Oh. I'm not gonna say the name. But I know who. But I will tell you later though, it was a personal friend of mine who did that from around here. So was that a joke or? Yes, yes. And he also mentioned me, um, you keep telling people different ways your grandmother died or you have yeah, so many that's, grandmothers. That's, total, that's a total lie, I have a lot of the grandmothers because I come from two different sides, I have two, two fathers. You, oh, you have two fathers. Yes, I have a biological father who abandoned me when I was a baby. Yeah, like you said in your documentary, and to be honest, I consider your documentary more of a vlog. 
because yeah, a it lot was, of people do too. Yeah. It was yeah. more personal because you were basically I added, like, I was vlogging I like that. I was surprised with some of the music too. I really was. When my video a week later after my video got uploaded, you I I got a Gmail that you posted a comment and quickly deleted it because I cannot yeah. find this comment on YouTube. Yeah, because I didn't know what to say at first and then I was like, yeah, I'll delete that. So, you you admit you deleted it because you weren't sure about what you said? What I should say right now, yes. Okay, I thought you were like... I was about to say something like, kind of a smart ass comment, but then I was like, yeah, you know what? It's not the right way to go with this, I believe. Oh. And, uh... I know you talked a lot about vegan gains. I don't... I, I genuinely don't know why. Um, but... Um, because you, we were film awards and, and we made mistakes with who we thought was the film that Because I wasn't a part of that committee at the time. But, uh, you keep and, telling... And started a whole, whole lot of drama, which I will not go into. Yeah. Um, you, um... You told me you liked the movie, but Max told like me that you said to him you hated it, so you love it, you hate it, what's going on? I hated it at first, but I like it now. What changed? I think the rewatchability. Really? Like, yeah. what at specific first I was thing? Very, I was very like, what? at first I was, sorry, at first, um, well, this is coming from the same Max who showed me a film that he made that didn't have subtitles and it's completely in a different language. Yeah, it's in French. What's going on? But, um, but he added subtitles to the video. Yeah, and I didn't realize that because I didn't know how to say it. I never learned for this the first time. Nah, that's not the games. That's another film he did. Mm. Uh, in the bed, I think it was in the bed, uh, which is great. Um, I think for me, the first time I saw it, I didn't really know how to think. It was different and it was unique and it reminded me a lot of the big short in a little bit of ways mm -hmm. because it was different um i don't know if that was an inspiration or not and now i think it's a great film i think it's terrific i just think some movies you have to see um a couple times because i did ha i was only acting in that movie because you talked about yeah, me like yeah, if i made the movie so i realized yeah 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 i directed other film projects with Max but this one I was just in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I um, thought you directed it honestly, so I was And I in was to, uh, the interview with Max he called you a pathological liar and that you lie all the time. And he well, told I me he to could him in two years so I don't know how we really could say that. So And he told me you could lie to me the entire interview based on what you told me and how this has been the interview but you you briefly talked about it but why did you constantly lie back then just i i don't know i just wanted the people not to think of me as a joke which is very hard for me honestly to say because um, i just wanted to be so cool i you know i've been made fun of my whole life when i was in high school so it was just you know and i found people who were no Mm. And um, I just thought it was to be cool, and uh, it was just, it made me feel like a, you know, a joke. And now that I can say, hey, I'm being myself, you know, that, that's who I'd rather be. Mm. Sorry, my fiance and my daughter came in. No, no, it's fine. Alright. And uh, I don't. But I am running a little on time, though, but you know. I am thinking about it. You said you did online film school, but I went to film school and they give you the gear to make your projects, but since it's online, what do you do? I did it myself. So everyone does it their self, even if they don't even have a good quality phone? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Uh, wow. Didn't think it Where was like... Where did you go to school at? Well, I don't go to school anymore. I work in 
real productions right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because were you on uh, X Men? I think what was that Max introduction? Uh, Max did one day in X uh, maybe a week in X Men. I got asked yeah. to work on X Men without telling me it was X Men, and I said no because I was already working on other things. You regret it at all? No. According to rumors, the condition was horrible. Yeah, yeah. And the movie wasn't even that good. No, no, no. no. And if I could do something like that, if I was a lot closer somewhere, I would. Mm. But sitting back down in Nebraska, I just have to start the way I do. Mm. Yeah, Nebraska don't really have those I'm productions. I'm originally from Florida, so. Oh. And bought in the Boston area. But my grandparents were here, so we moved when my father retired. Hmm. And uh, I, uh, since we're not on Google Hangout, wanted to know if you yeah. wanted to talk to Max, but since we can't have joint conversations um, here. I respect the shit out of Max for wanting to have a career and to go into school. But he has said it personally and clear that he doesn't want to talk to me. He wants nothing to do with me. And I'm going to respect that and just say... Fair enough. Okay. So it's the right thing to do. And that's the honest honesty. But I think that's all for this interview. Thank you for taking your yeah, time. It was, a, it was a lot and I thank you for your time. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, it was difficult to uh, <laughs> really heavy shit, bro. Some very personal shit that I've never surely talked about. So, mm. uh, well, uh thank you for taking your time and uh We'll see the reaction after this gets released. So, take care, man. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. So, the interview is over. And I think it went well. I know one of the two guys that I've talked to is lying. It is just which one is lying. Chris admitted that he lied back then, but is he still lying today? I have no clue. Some of the stuff Max told me, he denied. And other things that Max told me, he did not deny. And in my opinion, he was very vague with how his film school worked. And um, the, the whole drama with vegan gains a films a, a movie I did I participated in film school and uh, I think it went well and uh, I understand Chris not wanting to talk to Max and I just know even after releasing this it's not gonna be over I know some drama will happen and that's just it I'm not gonna I hope not to make other videos about this but I'm pretty happy with what I got from these interviews and I just hope that nothing big happens after this gets released so like I said in the beginning of this video, after the second part got uploaded, a lot of drama went down. And I decided to say this at the end of the video. Um, Chris Day lied to me on this interview. And it's when I talked to him about Max Sounds claiming that Chris Day called him on his phone number and stalked him and found his phone number. Chris denied the accusations that Max said, but Chris Day, in his response video that he quickly deleted after I uploaded the second part, has admitted to finding Max's phone number and that it wasn't him that found the number, that one of his friends found the phone number and gave it to him and that he found the phone number because Max has posted his phone number on Facebook or made his phone number public on his Facebook and Max denies that he has put his phone number on his Facebook. Chris admitted to me on private message and on his 
deleted response video that he has found Max's phone number. So all of the accusations on Chris Day being a liar is true. He lied to me about the phone number and the final thing I have to say about it is Chris Day a liar or not, you can tell or judge for yourself. But uh, I am just really disappointed that Chris has lied to me in this interview and said to me on private messages that he didn't want to say on video that he actually found the phone number. So now, something I didn't expect to happen, I received some I received some screenshots of conversations or posts on Facebook of Chris getting confronted about his lies. I also received accusations against Chris for being a stalker, stalking people, and the person had to move. This is for something different. I do not want to bring or go into details about these things that were brought up to me. It is for another time and I don't think I'm gonna give or make this time possible because I do not want to get involved in this issue. This docu-series was about the content on Chris Day and the ex-friendship that he had with Max. I have a special announcement to make. I did not think this would happen but me, myself, Max and Chris Day will be on a podcast together talking about the docuseries and Max and Chris will go head to head in a, some sort of debate or talk about their differences and their experiences together online. So this will be on Max's podcast called MV Passion, MV Passion, like he says, the day this video gets uploaded on my YouTube channel so on February 15th tonight as this video gets uploaded there will be a podcast with myself, Max and Chris. If you're interested in our conversation about this whole docuseries and all of those things make sure you listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple, on streaming devices. I will put links in the description but if you're interested, watch the podcast. So I'm going to end this docuseries. Judge for yourself what you think about Chris Day. And also for Chris and his family, rest in peace to your brother. We will end this docuseries by uh, remembering Chris's brother who got murdered at his house.